Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to the details video about my 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokee manual transmission swap. Um, so, as you can see, I'm actually starting with my uh, proudest achievement, is uh, the interior, which looks quite stock. And here we are. This is, uh, don't worry about the units, it's metric units. We are in Europe, sorry about this. So technically this is a ZG. Uh, just for the uh, purists out there. Uh, this and the shift lever, uh, the only two interior trim parts uh, apart from this, um, come from a diesel ZJ, uh, same year that I bought for 500 euros. Anyway, the diesel ZJ is a perfect um, parts donor because it has the AX15 and uh, NP231. As you can see, the stock pedals uh, everything fit uh, the stock locations, which is pretty, pretty awesome indeed. I'll show you the underneath of the uh, dash right away. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's basically all there is to see in this position. Um, everything works. No alarms, no check engine light, nothing. Uh, and I'll tell you about that later. So let's go take a look. Okay, so welcome to the underside of my dash. The big black box is uh, the speed proportional steering, uh, which on V8s is actually mounted in place of the um, pedal bracket. So I just uh, double taped that up there. Now, the really interesting part is uh, the green connector with the, uh, the sketchy tape on it. This is actually what is saving me from the check engine light. The black wire that goes into the mat over there is actually the NSS wire. And uh, on diesel EJs, they use this as a uh, security uh, to prevent you from starting in gear. By the way, this is called the clutch interlock switch uh, in the FSM, and it's present on automatics and manuals. So my setup is NSS in, goes out, and goes out to one of the two uh, wires on the switch. Uh, prevents the ECU from throwing a, a check engine light. Uh, if I do not plug the uh, wire, just the NSS to a ground, I will have a check engine light. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that the black wire, the NSS, goes through the master cylinder switch and then goes back to this clutch interlock switch, basically. Um, it's funny because the clutch interlock switch on V8s is not used, it's just left in the harness, unplugged uh, and tucked away. And I found it you know, by chance. And it's exactly the same switch that the uh, diesel switch uses to connect the clutch pedal to the clutch interlock switch, and it serves as a, an anti-start feature, basically. Uh, when I plugged it as it was, uh, it didn't do anything, uh, so I had to wire something special with the NSS, which is logical. Um, and, and basically, I'll, I'll show you a wiring diagram so you can better understand the, uh, the uh, circuitry uh, that lies behind this photo. Um, basically, the NSS uh, is you know switched with the clutch pedal, and it connects back to the harness that goes back to the ECU. Now, basically, what that would do uh, was just tell the ignition switch that the the pedal is pressed, and it could carry on the uh, start procedure. Um, but somehow, it goes directly to the ECU and makes magic, <laughs> and the check engine light does not appear at all. One of the two wires of this clutch interlock switch is just a ground, so that won't work at all. I'm not sure if it's just a ground or something else. I, to be honest, the, um, the FSM doesn't do a very good job at informing me of uh, what's actually happening behind these wires. So uh, we'll just leave it to, to magic, <laughs> black magic. Uh, basically what I think is that I'm just short-circuiting the ECU somehow. But it's not doing any more damage, it's not doing any damage, actually. It's just preventing the uh, the check engine light from coming on. Uh, however, if I do scan the... Uh, uh, if I put an OBD2 scanner, I will get some, some sort of silent uh, error code, but it doesn't throw a check engine light. So basically, the, the ECU knows something's fishy around here, uh, but it doesn't throw the check engine light and the engine runs fine and I've had no no problems at all. So this is a workaround, perhaps it works or it won't work for you, especially in the US because I'm not even sure you have a, a clutch interlock switch. So 
basically for Europe, it's sh it's a surefire way to avoid having to change the ECU uh, and, and swap it out for a, a Dodge Ram 5.2 five-speed uh, ECU. Uh, but if you do, please check underneath your dash. If you can find this green connector, then I think there's something to try. And just you just do the wiring like I did it. Uh, not you don't have to go through a, a master cylinder switch, just a push switch when you start and see if that does anything for you and if it does well way to go you just save yourself an ECU okay so now let's carry on the explanation video the engine compartment uh, this is the uh, clutch uh, master cylinder reservoir clutch master is just underneath there it is uh, this is the firewall you just have to drill through there and there's another bolt underneath that comes from the pedal bracket this is very very simple to mount uh, to mount the uh, clutch line, the hydraulic line, you have to take out um, a lot of stuff. You have to take out the um, the, uh, yeah, the steering shaft, I guess, that goes from the, um, the steering column to the steering box, which is here. Because you have to put the uh, hydraulic line uh, underneath it. You also have to uh, unbolt the uh, ABS module so you can really slip the uh, hydraulic line under there and under the uh, brake booster. And there you have it, it's almost stock. Don't mind about this, this is the um, LPG installation in England, in uh, the US it's called Autogas. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's not a good thing. Anyway, uh, this is temporary for now, I'll get it fixed up. Let's go underneath. Okay, so we're underneath my Jeep. <laughs> Uh, not very sexy at all. So, yeah, I think you may recognize the main components. Uh, the bell housing that came from a 97, same year. Dodge Dakota V6 3.9 liter. Uh, the 3.9 is actually the V6 version of the 5.2. Um, so the AX15 transmission mounted on all diesel ZJs and XJs uh, and the 4 liter XJ uh, since ever, uh, well, apart from 89. Talking about supports, uh, this support is actually the stock support that's been slightly modified uh, which uh, came off the diesel ZJ and the X15. So this is slightly temporary, it's just so I can you know, drive the drive it, commute with it. Uh, I'll redo uh, a support later on. The flywheel is what I'm touching right now, it's quite greasy as well. And this is the stock flex plate and basically what I read on the write-up before I did it is that you can just uh, basically uh, remove the ring gear from the uh, the Dakota flywheel, which is actually for a V6, and just uh, superpose uh, the flex plane. Uh, I guess you could use a 5.2 flywheel uh, because that's made for a, uh, a V8. Uh, perhaps I'll just change my decision once I do my first clutch job on this. Uh, we'll see. Let me tell you about the exhaust, if I can get closer. I don't know if you can see it from here, uh, probably not. Um, you know you have to change the manifold because the stock manifold would be in the way of the starter. Many people talked about the uh, uh, Sanderson or whatever and I just, I just couldn't afford them. An alternate solution, early model 340 exhaust manifold with a sender dump and apparently this came from a Plymouth or a Dodge Dart, I can't really remember. I just welded on a new downpipe with a friend. That's it. I need to find a cover for my flywheel. The uh, bell housing inspection port cover. Uh, when I bought the bell housing, it wasn't included. Uh, this is the clutch um, slave cylinder. Uh, this, however, the studs are 5 sixteenths of an inch. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a pain here to find in France, but I have a, sp a special internet supplier that I get all my uh, hardware from. So this has been my brief explanation video for my 5-speed swap in my 5.2 liter Jeep Grand Cherokee. You can check out my full write-up in the description below. It has all the uh, in-depth details you might need, uh, especially the full parts list. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the section below and I'll respond as soon as I can.